And if we want to be effective analysts and responders, we need to be comfortable with using PowerShell to query and inspect and manipulate system data, uh, or automate repetitive tasks and gather detailed forensic information from endpoints. And in PowerShell, we have access to the aptly named get process commandlet. Now, get process allows us to quickly and easily list out the running processes on a Windows system. And when we pull back get process on its own, we're going to see several different columns or properties that return to our output listing. Now, of course, we can filter the output of the get process commandlet as well. And as best practice, when we work with PowerShell, we want to adhere to this concept of filter left. Now, filter left is the principle of filtering as early as possible in our command pipeline. And so if you've ever worked with a Seam or a Sim system before, like Splunk or Elastic or Microsoft Sentinel, you're probably familiar with this concept, right? The idea is we want to reduce the overhead on our different processes or our search head by filtering as early as possible to limit the amount of results that we're returning. And so if we wanted to filter for, say, uh, different notepad processes, uh, it would be less effective to run uh, a query like this, where we're grabbing all the different processes, right? So we're first grabbing all the running processes. Then using the pipeline, we're evaluating the where object clause for each of those processes where the process name equals notepad. If I run this, we should get a result here, right? Now this came back very quickly, but you can imagine if we're querying hundreds of different processes on a system or, you know, thousands of processes across multiple systems, well, it's not the most effective way from a resource perspective to get this information. Now, fortunately, like many different commandlets here to interrogate different system processes, get process gives us the built-in name parameter here. And by doing it this way, we are filtering as far to the left as possible, right? In fact, we aren't even piping anything uh, to where object in this case. And in fact, because the name parameter is actually positional in nature, uh, we don't even need to include that parameter when we specify the name of the process we're trying to return. In fact, uh, we can actually use wildcards with get process as well, right? So if I just search for note with an asterisk here as a wildcard, we're still going to pull back the same process. Now we could do the same thing with the process ID as well, right? So we can see here that the process ID for notepad in my case is 20468. So if I run get process with the ID parameter of 20468, again, we're gonna pull back the exact same result here. 